Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Saturday it is. Hope we all had a wonderful and hopefully a pretty productive week out there. And we've got a pretty active week ahead here as a big-time storm system is set to work on through the country here, uh, really going into the middle of next week. And I'll tell you, it's going to bring a lot of impacts with it, uh, really starting as soon as right now, moving through the Pacific Northwest, then eventually, again, uh, working over the Rockies, then the Central Plains, and finally the East Coast as we get a little bit later on into next week. And all sorts of impacts from wintry weather to to severe weather to a big time warm up followed by a big time cool down and we're getting into that time of the year now where that's going to be a pretty common occurrence I think for a lot of folks here uh, within the next couple of months as we get kind of into this roller coaster pattern uh, that we see so often in the springtime. All right, so uh, again, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it, and I do want to say thank you to everyone who is uh, returning, even uh, whenever the weather might not be quite as wintry, and I know I haven't been as active with the videos recently, but just been catching up on a lot of classwork, as you uh, most of you know, at least. I am a full-time student, uh, so of course that comes with its own um, kind of obstacles uh, within my scheduling, and I also have another job outside of this uh, that, you know, I kind of have to have to pay the bills. So uh, again, just appreciate all of you hanging in there with me and understanding that my schedule is oftentimes kind of all over the place, especially this time of the year. Spring semester always, for some reason, feels a little bit more complicated than fall semester uh, for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure why, but just kind of the way it uh, unfolds and works out. So uh, again, that's enough of me rambling on. Let's go ahead and talk about the weather, though, as again, I'm sure that's why most of you are here and not so much to just hear me uh, ramble on about whatever. So and taking a look at satellite imagery on our Saturday here, you'll notice we've got a couple areas of active weather. Uh, the one most of you are probably feeling right now, at least uh, most of my regular viewers, are is kind of over the uh, Ohio River Valley right now and kind of getting into the mid-Atlantic. Uh, this is an upper level low with a very cold pocket of air aloft that's kind of swinging on through the eastern half of the country and currently bringing some uh, snow showers through Ohio, West Virginia, and the mountains of North Carolina and could also bring some uh, convective showers potentially this afternoon uh, here into portions of the uh, Carolinas and southeastern Virginia, not out of the question. So definitely watching out for that throughout today. And uh, again, could uh, see some active weather throughout the rest of today. Now, out west, we do have kind of a bit of a swirly uh, low pressure here, if you will, off the uh, coast of California, but pretty far offshore, and luckily, we're in a little bit of a lull through much of the west coast. Now, we do have some pockets of clouds and maybe even a couple of showers here moving on through the desert southwest and a more pronounced uh, trough uh, kind of up into the Pacific northwest, but all things considered, uh, kind of in the quiet before the storm that really begins over the next couple of days out west, and again, all of that involving this big trough that is eventually going to swing out of Canada here and bring some very active weather uh, for our kind of end of February going into next week. Now, taking a look at uh, radar throughout much of the country, again, most of the active weather right now is out here into the mid-Atlantic, and we'll go ahead and dive right on into that and uh, look at that part of the country, and uh, you'll notice, again, we've got some snow showers working on through the higher terrains of West Virginia, uh, likely some rain showers here into the Piedmont of North Carolina and kind of through the Danville, Virginia area, seeing some light showers, and uh, we cannot rule out throughout today some of these storms, or not storms, but showers could become a little bit more convective in nature, just meaning they get a little bit more bubbly, kind of rise a little bit more more, have a little bit more instability to work with, and that could lead to some uh, scattered areas of hail or grapple this afternoon uh, from Raleigh through Charlotte down towards Columbia, Florence, uh, Greenville, North Carolina, Fayetteville. I uh, could see some of that, but really the bigger story today is going to be some of that mountain snow here through West Virginia and the higher terrains of North Carolina, really uh, mainly above 4,000 feet in elevation, seeing mo uh, most of that wintry precipitation. Now, back out west, again, not much showing up on radar, but we have plenty of high wind warnings and uh, winter storm watches in effect for much of the uh, Pacific Northwest and even the Rockies out here through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, and Utah. That, again, is due to this trough that is soon uh, to kind of work on through this part of the country. And again, that's really the big story through most of this video, as that is going to lead to very active weather over the next week for just about everyone in the country here. Uh, so again, all these watches and warnings out here just in anticipation of that are really beginning to kind of uh, start those impacts as early as tomorrow uh, out west. So that's kind of what radar is looking like and what satellite is looking like right now. Now, taking a look at uh, kind of uh, the overall 500 millibar height uh, anomaly map uh, for right now and kind of why that's important. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we've got this big trough in the east that is leading to cooler temperatures, cloudier weather, and again, that mountain snow that we mentioned. 
Now, out here towards uh, Alaska and uh, kind of western Canada here, this is that trough that I've been talking about. This is that big uh, area of cold uh, air that is eventually going to cause some unsettled weather here throughout the next couple of days. Uh, so that's just kind of what the map looks like right now. And we'll take a look at this map again later on in the video. But for now, uh, let's quickly uh, kind of take a look at some of that snow that's happening out into the east coast and time that out for you throughout the rest of today. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Again, you'll notice on your map, this is about 1 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, you'll see we've got snow flying here through much of northern West Virginia. Still just rain into uh, Virginia and North Carolina, at least into the Piedmont of these states. Could see some mountain snow here into Virginia and North Carolina, and we'll definitely be watching that. But as a whole, um, you know, mainly rain here for those lower elevation areas. Now, as we go into this afternoon, you'll notice that snow continues, but also slowly begins to wind down. Uh, here through West Virginia and into the mountains of North Carolina, specifically, again, about four to 5,000 feet in elevation and above. Uh, so most people, again, this is just going to be rain. We are getting pretty late into winter after all. But for those higher peaks, uh, Beach Mountain, Grandfather Mountain, uh, Mount Mitchell, uh, and again, just those peaks that are really kind of high up there, could definitely pick up a quick couple inches of snow out of this. Now, into this afternoon, this is about 4 o'clock, you'll notice here those showers and again, maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder trying to mix in here as some of that sun that came out this morning is trying to fuel some of these storms. But again, this is more of a cold core setup and what I mean by that is just a lot of dry air kind of working into these storms and very cold air. Uh, so this is uh, one of those setups we only see a couple times a year in the Carolinas, but again, it is uh, conducive for maybe a little bit of small hail as well as grapple. And if you don't know what grapple is, um, I always compare it to Dippin' Dots. If you know what Dippin' Dots are, you kind of always see them at um, uh, kind of amusement parks. They sell them. It's kind of the little ice cream pellets, if you will. It's kind of what grapple looks like, uh, but the kind of process behind that is a little more complicated. And it just kind of involves raindrops uh, freezing on top of snowflakes and a lot to do with the Bergeron process and a whole bunch of other stuff I won't get too much into here. Uh, but again, just know it's kind of hail. It's not quite as uh, solid and it's a little bit more soft. So if you do see any of that today, definitely let me know. Uh, always super cool to see that as we don't see it very often this time uh, or excuse me uh, in this part of the country or really anywhere. It's not a super common precipitation type. So again, super cool uh, if you are able to see some this afternoon. Now, moving this further ahead into this evening, about the time the sun is going down here, again, some of those uh, showers and storms working on in through eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, and eventually, by the time we get into overnight tonight and into the midnight hour, uh, most of us are really drying out. We've just got that cooler, drier air funneling on in, and by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning for our Sunday, again, much uh, drier, nicer weather in store for most of us in the east. Now, at the same time, we will have a little bit of a clipper system uh, with a trough kind of uh, working on through the uh, uh, Great Lakes region. So could see some snow tomorrow morning through the UP of Michigan, maybe even northern Michigan. And that same piece of energy eventually going to work on through the northeast tomorrow and could bring a quick burst of snow overnight Sunday into Monday here. Uh, through New York State and into uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Again, nothing crazy out of this, maybe a dusting to an inch of snow, but uh, nonetheless enough that it's worth mentioning here. Again, through the overnight Sunday and into Monday, a quick burst of some snow showers before waking up Monday morning. And uh, again, relatively clear for most folks. Can't rule out a couple sprinkles, again, as that associated cold air kind of works on through. Now, snowfall totals here uh, through the rest of today. Now, most of this has already fallen back through Ohio, so kind of just uh, mark that out on your map here. But any snow you see into the higher terrains of West Virginia here and North Carolina, a lot of that's still to come. and could pick up, again, a quick couple of inches above 5,000 feet. Uh, I think maybe the highest peaks here, uh, around 6,000 feet, could see three inches or so of snow, but really not a blockbuster storm system here. And in fact, I think these snow totals have kind of trended down a little bit uh, compared to what it might have looked like a couple of days ago. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. And then as we move this up into the northeast, again, those isolated snow showers through Monday morning could bring a quick uh, burst of a dusting to an inch of snow here through New York State, uh, Vermont, and northern New Hampshire, and even portions of Maine there. But again, more of a novelty event than anything that's really going to bring uh, any long-lasting impacts. Now, temperatures, this is for tonight. Obviously, you'll note that colder air in the east as that kind of bowling ball of cold air that we looked at on our 500 millibar map is uh, kind of rolling on through. And in fact, it's going to be very cold tonight into the northeast. We've got some of us getting down into the single digits and near zero uh, into upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So if you're up in that area, definitely bundle up tonight. An unseasonably cold night for late February. Uh, so definitely make sure you're watching out for that. And again, even down into the East Coast, into the Carolinas, getting below freezing tonight. So if you have happened to maybe already start planting anything down here into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, again, not quite planting season yet, but if maybe you got a little... Um, uh, you know, early with it, definitely make sure you're covering any plants tonight in that part of the country. 
and uh, you'll notice a little bit warmer tonight out here into the southern Great Plains. This is all due to that ridge on the other side of this trough that is really going to ramp up big time warm air, especially going into uh, kind of early this coming week and it's going to help to fuel those thunderstorms that could lead to some severe weather uh, kind of into the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of this coming week. And going into tomorrow afternoon, uh, high temperatures here, again, look at this big ridge in the atmosphere, uh, really allowing for that very uh, warm air uh, to advect northward here under that. And uh, we're going to have a very warm day for our Sunday <clears throat> into the southern Great Plains, getting well up into the 70s, even 80s through much of Texas, uh, while we're still holding on to cooler temperatures up here into the northeast. Uh, now for the mid-Atlantic, kind of going to be fighting between those two boundaries of that warm air and that cold air, but could see a pretty nice afternoon uh, getting up into the 50s. Same story for the Ohio River Valley. But again, just kind of find your place on this map, and that's uh, what the National Weather Service is calling for uh, for your high temperature on your Sunday, February 25th. All right, uh, now let's kind of talk about next week. Again, it's going to be an active week, and uh, we're going to see a little bit of everything next week, so we're going to have to kind of discuss multiple places on the map here as this big storm system kind of works on through. Now, I said we were going to revisit this map, and sure enough, here we are, 500 millibar map, going to be very important for this week ahead, and you'll notice as we get into our Sunday afternoon here, uh, note what is happening up into Canada. This big area of blue or this mass of cold air, uh, you know, and associated troughing with it is going to eventually kind of slide southbound and bring a lot of mountain snow into the Rockies here. So that's going to start Sunday afternoon, and eventually getting into Monday afternoon, you'll notice this trough is really taking shape here with this kind of kink in the atmosphere of that blue uh, kind of working on through, and that will slowly slide eastbound throughout the week. So this is Monday afternoon, and then by the time we get into Tuesday afternoon, this is now working into the Great Plains and allowing for that uh, threat of severe weather to kind of um, you know ramp up across much of the central part of the country. And eventually into Wednesday afternoon, uh, that trough continues to work on through here, uh, through much of the uh, you know central part of the country, getting into the Ohio River Valley at this point, and then finally uh, getting into our Thursday afternoon swings on through the northeast and could bring some active weather that way before on the backside uh, going into next weekend another ridge of warm air works on in and uh, we're right back into uh, kind of the spring-like pattern uh, with much warmer temperatures and probably even dew points cranking up a little bit here as well. Uh, so that's kind of the next week or so and what we're expecting uh, in that side of things. Now getting into specific impacts here, this is uh, winter storm impacts for the next three days and you'll notice as I mentioned, as that trough works on through the Pacific Northwest, uh, the chances of some wintry weather increase with it. So we could see um, uh, moderate to even major winter storm impacts here uh, through much of the northwestern half of the country through the next three days, especially into the Cascades here uh, and into the mountains of uh, northern Idaho and Montana really could warm up and bring some of those warmer temperatures excuse me, uh, not warm up, but uh, uh, cool down and bring some of those uh, snowier conditions. Sorry, I'm kind of, you know, a lot going on here, so I'm kind of confusing some of the things. But again, uh, through the next three days, very snowy pattern up into the northwestern half of the country, especially in those higher terrains of the Rockies. Now, the snowy side of things is not the only threat here. We also have a severe threat, as I mentioned. Here we go, Tuesday afternoon, Storm Prediction Center is already outlining an area for possible severe weather from Arkansas up through uh, the St. Louis area, Chicago, Indianapolis, even into uh, Detroit and into South Central Michigan under the gun for some severe weather. Again, as all of that warm air is pushing northbound here and that wind energy is moving on through, uh, very easily could see um, some severe weather here for Tuesday and even Wednesday. You'll notice that threat now shifting off towards the south and east through Nashville, Memphis, uh, Huntsville, Tupelo, uh, Louisville, uh, even the Pikeville area of uh, Kentucky there could see some strong storms for our Wednesday afternoon and then maybe even Thursday somewhere along the eastern seaboard or into the northeast. We'll have to watch uh, to see if some of that warm air can advect far enough northward that we see some strong storms once again uh, even later on into the week. But just know again a very active pattern in both kind of uh, sides of uh, the weather here. All right, let's time this out a little bit and take a look at exactly who could be saying uh, what and when here on the map. And uh, we'll kind of skip this ahead a little bit into our Sunday afternoon. And uh, you'll notice, here we go, here's that uh, snow beginning to break out over sections of the Pacific Northwest for our Sunday afternoon, really piling up that snow in the higher elevations and just some good old-fashioned rain along the coast and into the lower elevations. Now getting into Monday afternoon now here, again widespread snow falling into the northern Rockies as I uh, showed you with that winter storm uh, index map just a moment ago. And again, this could pile up quickly. We could see some big time snowfall totals and I'll show you that here uh, after this map. 
Now here we go into Tuesday afternoon. It's still snowing likely into the Rockies, now getting down into Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and maybe even some snow breaking out here into Nebraska and the Dakotas. Potentially even Minnesota could see some snow uh, as that cold air is kind of uh, working on through and low pressure is now beginning to form at the surface for our Tuesday morning and afternoon. Now, as the slow pressure continues to form, that is going to allow for some lift in the atmosphere. And here we go into Tuesday afternoon and evening. You'll notice storms now firing off along the slow pressure. And that is what is going to lead to some severe weather here. Uh, again, we've got a lot of wind energy. And also, we've got a lot of these isobars bringing that warm air and that humid air out of the Gulf of Mexico. And as I mentioned, uh, wind coming out of the uh, west here. You'll notice whenever these two uh, wind barbs are crossing each other, it's going to cause plenty of spin in the atmosphere. I know it's probably a really ugly way to draw it. On your map, but nonetheless, um, you know, we're going to see uh, plenty of rotation in the atmosphere here for our Tuesday afternoon, and uh, as well as into our Wednesday as the storm system continues to crank up here. Uh, you'll notice again bringing some snow potentially up into the Great Lakes uh, on the back side of the storm system, even up into Canada, into Ontario and Quebec. Could definitely see some snow out of this. Uh, but Wednesday afternoon, that severe weather threat now again, once again, uh, lighting up here through potentially the um, Ohio River Valley, maybe into the mid-Atlantic, into the mid-South as well, could see some strong storms out of this. And also on the backside, look at these blue isobars. This is a big mass of cold air uh, on the backside of this storm system. So it's going to kind of hit you like a ton of bricks, I think, here. We're going to have a very warm, humid start to the week, then a line of pretty strong storms works on through for a lot of folks. And then on the backside, very cold air. And uh, by the time we're getting into overnight Wednesday into Thursday here, very rainy conditions uh, into uh, really up and down the eastern seaboard from the northeast down into the southeast. Maybe a change over to snow on the backside here uh, through portions of uh, the northeast, specifically the interior northeast. And on the backside again, as we get into Thursday afternoon, this big block of cold air uh, takes over for much of the northeast and the eastern half of the country. Uh, so again, I've talked about a roller coaster here. Sure enough, earlier in the week, again, that ridge is going to build in very warm temperatures. By the time we get into the middle and end of next week, after some severe storms and snow works on through, depending on your location, uh, we're going to cool back down big time again. So don't get fooled by kind of this fake spring that we're going to see. And it's not the first fake spring we've seen this year, uh, but it sure is definitely another round of it. Uh, before eventually, hopefully later on into March and April, we kind of get into real spring. So again, uh, just kind of that time of the year where uh, things are all over the place and that is going to continue here into this week. Okay, taking a look at snowfall totals here. We'll start in the Pacific Northwest. Again, it's going to be very snowy here. This is through next Friday. So this is about a week or so, maybe about five to six days of snowfall. And you'll notice a lot of it specifically up into the Cascades where we could see more than uh, 90 inches of snow, not out of the question into the higher elevations here. And uh, even down into the mountains of Oregon as well, a lot of snow on the way. Same story here through sections of Idaho and into Montana, plenty of snow on the way. Uh, as uh, all of this energy through the atmosphere kind of works on through. And as we get down into the southwestern uh, part of the country, the uh, Sierra Nevada range could also see some pretty good snow out of this. Uh, I will mention, though, the northern Rockies likely to see more snow than the southern Rockies out of this setup. Uh, but still some snow down here through Nevada, uh, California, into uh, Utah, and even down into uh, portions of um, Colorado as well. Could see some pretty good snowfall totals. Now, one thing I do want to mention is um, we definitely do have uh, kind of some question marks here on the uh, uh, severe weather, exactly where it's going to happen and exactly how strong it's going to be. But kind of our two big uh, players in the atmosphere that we normally look for whenever we're forecasting severe weather is uh, instability or CAPE as well as uh, wind shear. And our latest European ensemble members, so kind of all of uh, you know the ensembles put together to find a mean here of exactly how much thunderstorm fuel do we think we're going to have. Well, you'll notice it's not off the charts here. So we definitely do have a kind of band of that here uh, through sections of Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, even portions of Michigan and Ohio for our Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and as we get into our Wednesday afternoon, that threat kind of shifts a little bit off towards the south and east. And uh, again, really just not anything too you know high on the instability charts here, but we could see some again down into the southeast. So we'll have to watch to see if that can overlap with any wind shear, uh, which is something we're a little bit more confident we're going to see here. So uh, Tuesday afternoon, you'll notice that uh, we've got this uh, again trough here leading to some big time uh, spinning in the atmosphere or some kind of change with uh, height in wind direction and speed. Again, kind of through the plains and even down into kind of where we're expecting some of that severe weather it's going to overlap with a little bit more of that thunderstorm fuel uh, through Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Illinois, and Indiana. By the time we get into Wednesday afternoon, you'll notice 
Uh, these uh, you know wind barbs are really picking up, and we've got a big area of very favorable uh, wind shear here uh, into the Ohio River Valley and even down into the Tennessee River Valley. So I feel pretty confident we're going to have the wind shear side of this, just how much thunderstorm fuel or how much instability, meaning uh, warmer temperatures and higher dew points, is able to kind of work on through uh, this part of the country. And one more thing I will also mention, just because I did not pull up the map here, so I'm going to very quickly do that, is uh, snowfall chances kind of outside of uh, the Rockies here. Again, we will see snow even into the Great Plains and Pacific, and uh, excuse me, uh, potentially the Northeast as well. So kind of showing you this map here. Uh, again, I think we're going to get some pretty good snow out of this into uh, sections of uh, Canada here through northern Quebec and uh, Ontario, pretty far inland, kind of away from the major cities, but worth mentioning. Uh, we could also see some snow, though, into the Rockies, uh, into uh, Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and northern Michigan. Again, could see some active weather out of this as well on the snowy side of things, and potentially also some snow on the backside here uh, into the northeast through uh, New York State, um, into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, portions of Massachusetts, and even uh, maybe down into the Appalachia chain. Going into uh, kind of the later half of this week, could see some pretty good northwest flow snow. Uh, that will definitely be worth uh, checking out here uh, in the models as we continue through this week. Now, final thing I'll leave you with here are temperatures. Again, a big warm-up earlier in the week. This is Monday afternoon, very well above average temperatures through much of the Great Plains, even into the East Coast. Uh, but by we get, uh, excuse me, by the time we get into Tuesday afternoon, you'll notice here's that sharp gradient showing up on our map. Again, very warm temperatures in the East. That's going to help to fuel these thunderstorms. Uh, but look at this block of cold air back into the Pacific Northwest and into uh, Southern Canada as that trough begins to work on through. And that cold air is eventually going to win out here. Wednesday afternoon, very well-defined cold front on your map there you know you can find that pretty easily where the uh, kind of uh, red is meeting the blue there and eventually that cold front sweeps on through uh, we've got well below average temperatures for our thursday afternoon here our friday afternoon and eventually going into next week as i mentioned earlier on here comes that ridge once again and we're back to very uh, well above average temperatures so all over the place this week gonna start warm get cold then end warm so kind of uh, prepare yourself for that get your body ready and uh, also get your allergies ready because i know the plants are getting tricked uh, just like we are here uh, with kind of the weather that has been ongoing Alrighty, well I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me, appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll get around to answering those as soon as I can. But I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday and I'll see you all tomorrow.